Hello, welcome back, channel, Ralph's Automotive. I really didn't know whether I want to make a video or not on this one here. It's not nothing major, nothing you couldn't figure out by all means. Just actually want to talk about uh, what's ailing these things here. If you're fortunate enough to be in the southern climate uh, where you still have them trucks around, uh, this is a 2002 Chevy Silverado and uh, regardless of the engine in, in it, uh, what's going on with this one here? Uh, the customer just asked me to uh, check out his water leak. He's got a, or coolant leak I should say, not water leak. Uh, and a common thing to happen on these trucks, and that's really why I'm actually, why I decided to go ahead and post this video, is this fitting here. It's a, it's a Y adapter. These get brittle over time, and they'll they'll end up leaking. And normally, what they'll do uh, when they're new, you see a seam. It's basically a faint line that goes across the fitting, and a lot of times they will split there. This one here will split. You know, he's been adding water to it, straight water to it. Uh, what I did is uh, I just went ahead and flushed the flushed it all out. You know, blow it blow it out as much as the uh, as much of the water as I could, you know, we did a nice uh, nice flush through it. I pulled the thermostat. We've had some leaking problems on it as well. And I'll show you what I normally do. I went ahead and ordered us a gasket for this, of course. And what it amounts to is we've, we started seeing buildup over here on the neck. And what that buildup is, that, that's a leak. You know, that, that's when you know you, you have it leaking. It starts building up on the sides here. It makes these little flowers, you know, and you can tell it's leaking. Uh, went ahead and bought a new seal, cleaned this up. Uh, I cleaned these up on the wire wheel. Of course, on, on these trucks right here, this, this uh, thermostat housing is not actually a thermostat housing. It is the thermostat. Uh, when you buy a thermostat for these, this is what you buy. But anyway, uh, I've got some of the copper glue on there. That's I just sprayed that on there to hold this O-ring seal in place. There's a new O-ring seal. Yeah, I kind of kind of done destroyed that. That's a this is a Felpro 017-5340. Of course, you can't, like I said, can't read it anymore. This old one, it's completely flat. Uh, our last person that put a water pump on here, they reused that seal and they put uh, black silicone, which uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and call that out. It's pretty stupid. Uh, the O-ring is like a buck or buck 50, something like that. You know, the, the go ahead and waste the black silicone to seal that. That's pretty, pretty idiotic, in my opinion. Oh. Uh, These are now readily available. This one here is a Gates. This is the hose assembly that we need. There it is in one piece. Of course, it goes from your filler tank. It goes down to the uh, thermostat housing, and it also goes back to the heater, and that's the reason they call the heater hose. Uh, number on this is a 22554. <clears throat> I found over the years that uh, you better bet is to go with the gates. They seem to do better than the cheaper versions of it. So if you have the availability on the gates, I would definitely opt for the gates. And uh, like I said, I didn't, I didn't even know that I wanted to make a video, but I figured I'd bring you all along just to, just to tell you, you know, if you got a coolant leak, uh, these fittings, uh, another fitting, I'm gonna let me get a light. Well, let me zoom in there a little bit so we can we can actually see it. Another bad area for breakage is those fittings over there. There are the the slip-on type that locks in. So I'll show you what uh, what one of them looks like. The uh, 
customer actually purchased this one here so oh I guess I gotta zoom you back out sorry about that um, customer purchased this one here he's had that in a truck he he put one on on and couldn't get the other one off so uh, he asked us if we could do that go ahead and do that this time around then we'll go ahead and take care of that for him uh, I'm not gonna film all that it's pretty straightforward you know the uh, the other fitting sits on the toward the pasture door the, the hose on the back here it's that hose right there that's the fitting we're going to replace uh, that's actually the the new hose that we're putting on anyway so we'll and we'll make this all new so I'm gonna get that right there off we can go ahead and, and dispose of this we cut there whatever we need to do uh, we'll dispose of that I'll get this unclipped from back there and we'll put it together here outside and that way all you got to do this is a push lock here all you got to do is just snap them in so that's a pretty easy fix and after that we'll uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the hose and after that I'm gonna bolt the thermostat back on uh, get that port of it done and uh, put the top radiator hose back on and then I'm going to bring y'all along with the airlift again you know I can't uh, I can't not say something good about it every time I use it you know that's a that's a very very professional tool uh, it eliminates a lot of the bleeding problems that everybody is having and you know uh, it eliminates the air pocket uh, I did some modification myself to this one here I'll show you that in a minute when I get the hose on. Give you all a quick peek of this. So got our ends put on here. Let me turn that screen around. Viewfinder anyway. Uh, clipped it back in there. Of course leave the sticker on it so you know next time if there is a next time. Uh, connected it back to the tank and here we are on the thermostat housing okay so everything is connected on that part of it fixing to put the uh, put the big hose back on I guess I could go ahead and leave the camera rolling since this video here is actually uh, pretty short so far went ahead and took the uh, heavy sealant off of there anytime you're working with silicone uh, you want to be cautious uh, silicone gets in the stuff you know it could possibly stop something up uh, matter of fact, uh, I've seen it twice in my day. Uh, one time I've seen it on a vehicle, it actually killed the heater because uh, they put uh, silicone, I believe, on a head stud that went through into the jackets. And the plug, they had so much on the bottom of it, it formed the plug. And that plug ended up going through the hose and everything and into the heater core, stopped the heater core up. They didn't have no heat. As always you know just a suggestion you do what you want to but uh, always watch your silicone use I'm gonna go ahead and use a scotch bright very very lightly I mean really really lightly even the the blue that is supposed to be for aluminum it will grind aluminum so you got to be careful with that uh, keep this flat up hold it as flat as you can hold it and if you're looking for it, I don't know the availability of it, but they make a gray color, not the brown, but they make a gray color that is actually finer than the blue. I just don't have any more of them. I'm trying to find you one, but I can't see one. Anyway, I gotta order me another box of them. They make a gray, like I said, that is even finer than this. I don't know about this air tool, if you wonder about this, I got a flex on there. Makes it a lot easier to get the things. And I mean a lot easier. Flat on that face, very little. Uh, grinding so to speak 
buffing, grinding, whatever you want to call it. Definitely do not want to uh, grind into it. That would not be a good thing. So take your thermostat housing, and this is the reason I glued this. Uh, that O-ring does not sit tight in these grooves at all. Uh, so if you try to hold that and put that all together, I guarantee you're going to end up with a leak. You're going to end up pinching the O-ring when you need another one, so glue them in there. Use anything, it doesn't matter. You know, and I realize, you know, we get asked a lot about, about torque all the time. You get that when we do these jobs, and, and if you were to get the torque wrench every time uh, for every bolt, you would never get the job done. I mean, you'd be here all day trying to do a two-hour job, you know. It's just one of them things, you know, when they when they do stuff in the factories, of course, they torque that stuff up, they torque it in series. You know, they don't do just one, they do however many they do. So, yeah, pretty fast process for them to do it. It's not when you're, uh, when you're in the shop trying to make a dime. And besides that, I can almost guarantee, if we look at the torque specs, I guarantee I'm going to be really, really close where they want you to be in the first place. You know, you've been doing it so many years, you learn what you do and don't do. And yes, uh, in the, along in the process, you know, when, when we do this stuff, you're going to break something, you know, that, that happens. Uh, I'll be lying if I would say or tell you any different, you know, I've broken stuff, but uh, I've broken stuff a long, long time ago. You know, it's, that hasn't happened to me in, well, I don't know, I don't know how many years, you know, I just hadn't broken anything. Hadn't had anything come apart, hadn't broke anything, you know, other than the occasional like soft stud. Well, I've noticed that one problem I got is with this here clamp. The uh, clamp is acting weird. Uh, trust me, the clamp is acting weird. I don't want to tighten up just right. Uh, grab another one. Do yourself a favor. Grab another one. And uh, going a little bit in reverse, what I do is I take the... Well, I'm going to wait on that. I'll show you when I put it back together. So we have the hoses on here, everything here is secured, uh, good on all that, clip that back in. The only one that stays off for right now is the very top. I like to keep it off till, till the very last thing that I do, and in a minute you'll see why. So we can go ahead and put the shroud back on. The shroud's got uh, 10 millimeter headed bolts, two of them. Uh, they're on the top here. That's how they come and they got push locks, uh, four of them, two on each side and they have alignment pin right here. Note that too, they have an alignment pin so you want to make sure that you get back on there and don't force that. There's no force in here at all. If you force, it will fail. I don't know if it's having done it so many times or or what, but uh, these things generally fall back in place. Here's your push nails, something else, you know, that uh, shops, you know, I don't know if that interests you or not, maybe you don't give a crap about it, but, uh, you know, we keep those in stock, an assortment of them. Of course, you can't buy every push nail for every vehicle. That is, I almost guarantee you that's impossible because there's just too many variations. Go 
ahead and snap these little doughies back in here. Snap the hose back in here in the top part of shrimp. Now this is a uh, A good time now to replace that hose. Put that tighten that bolt here up. I dropped one of them in the floor. Go ahead and get that one put back on and we'll find that bolt. I guess I can share this too. Uh, these here vice grips, those are my absolute favorite go-to pliers when it comes to removing these hose clamps. They have notches in them and slots. They are made for hose clamps. They got two settings. They slide just. So these are. This is a great tool. I love them. I use them all the time. I have the actual kit that has different styles. It also got the one. Um, with the cable, I also got that one. I hardly ever use that. Hardly ever. That right there is my go to tool. Okay, bolt. Gotta find it where it dropped. Can't find the bolt, just skip it. Nah, just kidding. Never ever skip a bolt. Well, every time you take something out, make sure it goes back in. The last thing that we want to do is uh, give back a vehicle that don't get get on the boats. We get them all the time. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I hardly ever work on a used vehicle that. Uh, well, I said used vehicle, that's probably not a good term. Uh, I hardly ever work on a vehicle that, that has all the fastest put back in it. Uh, at least not in this area here. So, take that how you want to. So, now, the last first, the first last, of course, goes without saying. Now I'm ready to put the uh, duct back in. Uh, we can do them dry. I found, you know, that, well, found, I know that a little bit of WD-40 goes a long ways. You, you spray a little bit of WD-40 on the rubber. Uh, makes all the difference in the world getting that stuff back together. Careful with the mass airflow. I've got it attached. You don't want to spray it on that mass airflow. You can help it. We slip that in here, and this is also got notches there is notches on the rubber you want to make sure that is properly lined up so there's notches here on top make sure you have them lined up that's something you don't want you don't want it off that's how this uh, crap always gets killed from my experience you know that's when stuff goes south and Plug your mass airflow back in. Overflow. We'll plug it back in. Tighten this other hose clamp up. This one here is firmly seated. And when you're taking it apart, there's a little clip that just sits in a little tang over here. So we're going to put that back in so that hold all that back in in place so at this point in time I did go ahead and of course like I said before distilled water is absolute best mix it with your uh, straight antifreeze the five gallon bucket the reason I use the five gallon bucket not the can is obvious because I use the airlift the airlift tool to fill these so when you use an airlift tool you have to have a bucket So here we find the proper adapter 
for our GM. Those of you that watch my videos, of course you know, but for those of you that uh, that are new to the channel, you know, you, you might not know, you might not ever see me mention it, that's why I keep on mentioning it. Uh, what I did uh, several years ago, I went to the old Harbor Freight and I got me a, uh, a vacuum pump, they're actually really good pumps, you know, as I always say, some tools are, are great, some are not so great. I use that vacuum pump with a long hose on it. I use it for a lot of things. Siphon oil and all kinds of good stuff. And I realize you all already well know that. So what I got here is I made up regular quick connect. And what I do instead of the original tool, the original airlift you use a you use shop air to blow through the shop uh, through this fitting right here and that's in in turn pulls the vacuum uh, into your tank so I don't use that anymore uh, for one I don't want to listen to the, the air it's way louder I just cap the end off and I use my air pump over here, my vacuum pump over here Ooh. A lot better vacuum than what the orifice tool here does. Starting to load a little bit more. Of course, I bring you along, and that's the reason why this tool works so well. It's starting to collapse everything. Uh, bottom and top. Take my word for it, it's starting to, matter of fact, it partially collapses those hoses over there as well. So of course the system is empty, well, there's quite a bit of air inside of it, with about 21 inches mercury right now. Generally, at one point in time, I turn the valve off and make sure that we're not losing all of our vacuum. And, and it appears that we're not. So if we were to lose our vacuum, that means something in the system is not sealed. And therefore, we need to investigate what's going on. We're now at 26 inches of mercury. It's going to get a little bit harder to pull pull the rest of the vacuum out of, out of the system now, you know. I don't know how much more we're going to get on this gauge. Don't know the accuracy of the gauge. We're at about 27 and a half, something in that neighborhood. Of course, 29 is about max anyway. Put our fitting in here. Drop this in our bucket. We are using deck school. Cautious 
of course, that you don't pull up the coolant. The last thing you want to do is pull the coolant back up. Give it a little bit more vacuum. Case here, this one that should be enough now to where we don't have a problem bleeding the system. Let me turn that uh, vacuum pump off. Most of your coolant should be through the engine right now. This is a very, very good tool. takes is an air pocket of course and uh, that'll mess everything up for you. Uh, we didn't make a mess on the floor. So this thing here is actually ready to start up and uh, get her filled up the rest of the way. I'm not going to film that part of it. I mean, uh, I really filmed what I really wanted to film. The the fact that I'm showing how valuable this, this airlift tool is. You know, I think, uh, I think my first airlift I bought 17, 18 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, could be wrong, but uh, I think they're, uh, they are the originals. And that's what that kit right there is. And I've been using this for a long time and I've not had a, a minute's worth of problem out of it. Like I said, the, the orifice that pulls the vacuum with the shop air works perfectly fine, but I just don't like the noise of it. I thought it's not quite as loud and I use it, I use it for that anyway, so. Uh, we'll add this to it. If you want to know why I don't want to uh, film the rest of it, here's why. here got an exhaust on it you know it's got a modified exhaust it's uh, pretty loud so I don't want to scream in the camera <laughs> can't hear what I'm saying anyway so anyway till next time <laughs>